Chinese company Zongshan is trying to get $70 million from the Nigerian government due to a dispute over a failed business deal. Nigeria hasn't paid, so Zongshan is taking action in the U.S. and French courts to seize Nigerian assets, including presidential jets. Now, Nigeria claims Zongshan is being unfair and trying to blackmail them. The case is complex, involving international law and arbitration, but both sides are accusing each other of wrongdoing. Now, what this means is it is a legal battle between Nigeria and the Chinese company over the business dispute, with the company trying to enforce a $70 million award and Nigeria resisting, claiming sovereign immunity and unfair treatment. Now joining us to further discuss this is Nick Agule, his public affairs analyst in the United Kingdom. Hello, Nick. Thank you so much for joining us at this time. Thank you very much. And good evening to our viewers globally. Good evening. All right. So, Nick, uh, speak to us on the basis of the dispute. How did the Ogun State government's revocation of Zhongshan's export processing zone management contract contribute to the dispute? That is actually the subject of the dispute. So Zonshan got a contract with the Ogun State government to build an export free zone in Ogun State. And that contract was signed in 2007 under the Benga Daniel, Governor Benga Daniel's regime. And then Governor Ibukule Amosun in 2015 decided to terminate the contract. And the Chinese firm were aggrieved that the contract was terminated. And they sought arbitration mm. in the UK court. And it was the UK Supreme Court that gave them a judgment in, back in 2021 against uh, Ogun State. And apparently, Ogun State did not do anything about that judgment. And now the Chinese company is going all over the world to get court decisions to agree to the UK judgment and seize Nigerian assets. So as we speak today, they have got um, an appeals court in the US to agree to seize Nigerian assets. And they also got this court in France to agree to seize Nigerian assets. And then Nigeria had three of our presidential jets in France uh, for routine maintenance. Uh, the other one we are actually being told is a new one that has been procured. And these assets are currently under seizure by the orders of the court. So indeed, the deal with Ogun State is the main reason for why this particular case, which mirrors that of Oh, 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 okay, okay, Nick. Case has uh, all right, uh, just before you go ahead, you talked about, you know, the French court, you know, ruling in the case, you know, uh, and the U.S. court also upholding the judgment in favor of Zongshan. Now, uh, what are the implications of the French court's ruling for Nigeria's assets worldwide and also the significance of the U.S. appeal court's majority judgment? Because uh, we know that Zongshan is actually asking, you know, to uh, take over Nigerian assets. So every court has a jurisdiction. Uh, Nigerian courts have jurisdiction in the sovereignty of Nigeria in a similar way with UK courts, US courts, and French courts. So even though this judgment was obtained in the UK, for Zonshan to enforce this judgment on Nigerian assets in any other jurisdiction, they will need the backing of the courts in that jurisdiction. That is why they filed the case in the U.S., uh, and that is with the intention that they will be able to confiscate assets of Nigeria in the U.S., and they have done it in France. So the decision by the French court applies to the territory of France and not outside of it. If they want to enforce the judgment in, judge, in, in Germany, for instance, they will have to go to a German court to tell them that we have obtained a judgment in a UK court, so help us 
to enforce the judgment in Germany and we uh, uh, confiscate Nigerian assets in Germany. So that is how the flow of this legal proceedings is going. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about, let's still focus on uh, the assets and let's look at the implications of, you know, this ruling for Nigerian assets worldwide. Now, the French court ruled that Nigerian assets worldwide can be seized in order to satisfy the award. Now, can Zunshan seize other assets such as, you know, bank accounts or properties in order to satisfy the award? Because we do know that, you know, uh, they're, they're eyeing some uh, jets and uh, other assets. Yes, uh, Zunshan will be and can actually seize any Nigerian asset, be it physical asset or cash in the bank. Uh, like in the US, Nigeria's crude oil, when we sell it, the proceeds are credited to US banks, uh, be it uh, uh, JP Morgan or Citibank, and John, John Shan, with the judgment they have received in the US, can actually seize that cash. Mm. Um, so, however, uh, even if, as the French court has pronounced a worldwide seizure, uh, John Shan will, will definitely have to get legal backing in each of the jurisdictions they go to to be able to enforce such seizures. Okay. Uh, uh, Nick, while you say that, you know, uh, they have the right to seize any assets, including, you know, the monies in Nigeria's uh, accounts, Nigeria also argues that the award is not enforceable because it was obtained by fraud. Now, considering that this is the argument, do you think that Nigeria can avoid paying uh, the $70 million uh, to Zonshen? And also, what do you think would happen if Nigeria insists or doesn't pay? Well, Nigeria can only go to court to place their arguments before the judges. That's to appeal. You see, there's, yes, there's a problem in Nigeria. And I think sometimes we try to transfer what we are doing in Nigeria to other jurisdictions and with disastrous results. It's only in Nigeria that a court of competent jurisdiction will pass a judgment or make a ruling and then you hear somebody sitting outside saying uh, it's not applicable, it cannot be done, it's not uh, what is expected, the court is wrong, this and that, and they don't accept the judgment. You, you often hear people in Nigeria saying, I don't accept the judgment of a court. Uh, th that, is, that is not going to happen elsewhere. Mm. Elsewhere, as Nigeria will painfully discover, if a court makes a ruling or delivers a judgment, you can only return to court to make your counter arguments. You can only go, go on appeal to appeal that judgment until you are able to get another court to set aside the judgment that was made by this court. That judgment is going to subsist and whatever it is that you are going to suffer from that judgment is going to happen. So this argument that Nigeria is putting forward, they better get a, a competent team of lawyers who will arrange um, uh, appeals, starting with the UK court, uh, to, to go and argue their points and, and perhaps get the judgment overturned, which is what actually happened in the P and ID case. Okay. Uh, now, uh, you talked about counter, you know, arguments and, uh, you know, uh, cases like this one, this particular one. Now, uh, as, uh, part of the argument for Nigeria is that they're claiming sovereign immunity as well. But the New York Convention states that awards shall be recognized and enforced notwithstanding any jurisdictional immunity, which you have also said. So how does the whole sovereign immunity defense affect the enforceability of the arbitration award? So uh, Nigeria's defense in the U.S. case was this sovereign immunity. And uh, though the judges had a split decision, two to one, mm. they rejected that uh, argument. So Nigeria better have to find another argument <laughs> to place before the courts because the one of a sovereign uh, immunity has failed in the U.S. Uh, court. 
All right, so while we're still on this, uh, can you enlighten us on uh, the arbitral tribunal award that uh, was given to Zonsheng uh, in March 2021 that amounted to 55, over $55 million plus interest and also the costs? Uh, what is the impact of that award also, you know, on Nigeria's, uh, on Nigeria's uh, finances? Uh, okay, so two questions in one. Yeah. The first one is that arbitration is a clause that most companies, organizations that are entering into transactions uh, or contractual uh, engagement with others uh, fix inside the agreements. And especially for Nigeria, I mean, worldwide, we are known that our judicial process is weak. As we can see, I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. Uh, we we have uh, we have a weak judiciary, a judiciary that doesn't act as uh, independent. Uh, sometimes they, they act as if they are incompetent. They themselves sometimes are unable to explain judgments that they have they have uh, delivered. And uh, we have had cases of corruption in the judicial uh, uh, arm of government. So let's not run away from the fact that they are. It all is not well without judiciary in Nigeria. And so uh, companies, especially foreign ones, that want to have something to do with Nigeria, uh, will normally insert arbitration clauses in the contract. Mm. And usually the arbitration clauses are, you know, fixed there uh, for foreign arbitrators because they don't even trust any arbitration process in Nigeria. Uh, and a uh, UK arbitration process is like a standard clause. Majority of these contracts have UK arbitration clauses in them. So anytime there's a dispute, instead of these people to go and waste their time with the Nigerian judicial system, they simply go on arbitration. And, and usually, Nigeria, in the way we do our things, we don't take these things serious. Mm -hmm. Maybe we receive a summons and we, are, we don't respond to the summons or we don't give due attention to the case. And we only get to know about the case when our assets have been seized or there so, so is. So, what uh, would what would likely be the result of uh, Nigeria's lack of unseriousness when it comes to this? This is exactly what we are facing here, with three of our presidential judges uh, confiscated in France. Uh, that is that is the result of uh, not paying attention, due attention to matters like this. You know, we think that the world oppressed like in Nigeria, where and people can be taken to court and they don't give any due attention to it. Elsewhere, the judiciary is supreme. Uh, they can take on even the leadership of uh, a country. You know, like here in the UK, I'm speaking, the prime minister is not above the judges. The judges can uh, actually act on him. In fact, the, the prime minister is not above the police. As we saw in the case of uh, Boris Johnson, uh, the police went to Downing Street, which is the official residence, of the prime minister here in the UK, they knocked on the door, opened it, went in, and confiscated his assets, uh, carried out an investigation, and they charged him to court and found him guilty. So until Nigeria comes to that level where everybody can be brought before the law, I don't think we can hope to get a country that is going to function as we expect. So that is that's the impact. The impact is that you mess with the with the law enforcement apparatus elsewhere, you pay dearly for it. Okay. Now, uh, you said if we mess with the uh, uh, apparatus elsewhere, we'll pay dearly for it. And, you know, we're still talking about uh, if Nigeria refuses to pay. So what other legal, we talked about Nigeria, you know, uh, filing an appeal. But what about for Zhongsheng? What other legal remedies are available to them if Nigeria refuse or refuses or fails to pay the award? And also, how do you think that they can be enforced? So, first and foremost, Zonshen gets a judgment in a UK court, and Nigeria refused to pay. There are all actually reports that the, 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 the executives in Zonshen, they came to Nigeria to try and enforce the judgment, and they were arrested and uh, molested, manhandled by our security agencies. I, I'm, not, I'm not in a position to confirm that. I, I read that somewhere. So that was the first stage. They obtained a court judgment, and Nigeria refused to pay. And when someone refuses to pay your judgment debt, the next thing you do is that you obtain the warrant from the court to seize their assets. 
So where we are now is no longer about Nigeria refusing to pay. If Nigeria does not do anything about this, John Shen will sell off those presidential jets mm. and recover their money. And if they sell them off and they, and, and they cannot recover their full money, they will continue to go around the world seizing Nigerian assets and selling them off until they recover their full judgment debt. That is the implication. Uh, that 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 looks like a, a, a horrible thing to do to Nigeria. But you know, still talking about the seventy million dollars, uh, it it would definitely cause quite a strain in Nigerian finances, considering that you know uh, we have debts to pay and you, you know we're also going through an economic crisis ourselves. Uh, how do you see the award impacting our budget and also our financial planning? First, we don't have uh, $70 million anywhere to throw away. We don't have it. And uh, if push comes to shove, and Nigeria cannot uh, defend this, cannot uh, appease successfully against this judgment debt, and we have to pay it, I don't think it's going to be the federal government that is going to pay it. Ogun State, where this whole thing happened, will be the one that will face it. And uh, obviously, Ogun State, we don't have the money to pay. But then, most courts in the world, we accept a payment plan. But, but then, from, the Ogun from, state government, you know, uh, also claimed that uh, Zonshan built only a perimeter fence around the free trade zone. So what is the significance of that claim? We should have argued that in court. Yeah. It, look, Zonshan is saying is otherwise problem. that they built a free trade zone and not just a perimeter. So this is the problem we have been having in Nigeria, where people are arguing legal matters outside of the courts. Mm. And we think that that kind of thing will also be obtainable elsewhere. If Don Shen took Ogun State to court and said, we built a, 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 an expo free zone, and you refused to pay us and you terminated our contract, Ogun State needed to go to that court and say, no, you built only a perimeter fence and show the evidence. The fact that you don't do that, and you are allowed to share to get a judgment, you cannot come and be arguing outside the, the corridors of a court when the matter is in court. You see, this is not Nigeria. I don't know for how, many, for how long or how many times I will say it, that the way we carry out our own business in Nigeria, especially as regards courts, is not the way it's happened elsewhere. Elsewhere, as Nigeria is painfully uh, realizing in this case, just as in the P and ID case, you have to go to court and counter whatever your opponent is saying there. You can't go to the newspaper, but I looked at the statement that the, 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 the presidential spokesman issued, and I say it, it doesn't carry any weight. It means nothing, mm. you know, until you go to court and obtain the judgment of that UK court, Nigeria is liable, and our assets will continue to be seized around the world. So on the alternative, Nick, can Nigeria negotiate a settlement? Because uh, Zonsheng uh, did say that they await the government's decision to settle. What would or uh, what should be the likely potential terms if they are to negotiate a settlement? Most all courts in the world, we approve of a settlement by parties before them. Almost all courts. So if Nigeria goes to the UK court and says, hey, we would like to have an act of co-settlement with Don Shen. I believe that there, there are all the, the likelihood that the court will agree. And then Nigeria will sit around the table with Don Shen and they'll have to come to an agreement. However, the agreement will be, it will, will, de will depend on the negotiation that happens in that room, whether Nigeria accepts to pay a judgment debt, maybe at a reduced rate, or provides any other scheme, it, it has to be agreeable to Zonshen. And if that is agreeable by them, then they will go back to court and say, okay, we have struck an agreement to settle out of court, and then the court will strike out the judge, I mean, strike out the case so that the parties can now go ahead and, and, and um, implement whatever they agreed. So the, the, that door is still open, uh, for Nigeria. Uh, but what I would think is that if Nigeria is contesting this issue, this case to say that no free zone was, was made mm. or the government of Ogun State has evidence that there were breach of contract or anything like that or by fraud, the yeah. they should put a legal team together and go to court to argue it.
Okay, now uh, let's talk about the ripple effect of this ruling. Uh, you've mentioned on one or two occasions the PNID case. Now, in light of the ruling, do you think that or can other foreign companies use similar arbitration claims to recover debts from Nigeria? They have been. It's just that some of the cases are not uh, well publicized, like the case of uh, PNID and Zonshen. Otherwise, uh, there, there, there has been. Um, I worked in the oil industry in Nigeria, and uh, all of the contracts that we had, even as oil companies um, operating uh, in joint venture with the Nigerian government, had uh, arbitration clauses, and some of the arbitration uh, cases uh, found uh, uh, Nigerian uh, companies uh, operators wanting, and judgment debts have been paid. So some of some of the, these things are going on. It's just that is is not all of them that end up in the public domain like this. No. All right, Nick, you've also mentioned, you know, that this is not Nigeria and that, you know, court business is different elsewhere. So if they want to, you know, defend uh, a case, they should uh, get a team of lawyers and travel abroad and make sure they defend, you know, their case and not just sit back at home and, you know, publish uh, whatever they want to publish. So uh, what are the implications, you know, of this dispute for international in investment in Nigeria and also for the arbitration law? It doesn't uh, do any justice to us at all. Uh, if you recall, uh, President Tinubu on uh, uh, taking office, he spent a considerable amount of time traveling around the world in the name of uh, looking for investors. Uh, how can you be looking for investors when you are treating those who have already taken the risk to come to your country badly? Hmm. You know, it, it, this kind uh, of news, and we also have um, so many multinational companies that have left Nigeria, you know, due to, you know, uh, the crisis, uh, that's the inflation and also the cost of living crisis in Nigeria as well. And more are still leaving. Exactly. So this is what we call enabling environment. If you don't create the enabling environment, then you're not going to get the investors that you so much want to come to, to come. Uh, the, the Dubai is not uh, the, the rulers in Dubai, they are not carrying briefcases going all over the world looking for investors. No, they sat back at home and created an enabling environment. And that is why people are flooding into the place with their monies to invest. So that's what you do, just do your homework. I mean, if you, if you run a hotel, if I can give an analogy, you run a hotel, there's no electricity in the hotel, no water, there's no food, the rooms are unkempt. Yeah, security is very porous, you know, and then you are busy junketing around the place all over the world looking for guests to come to your hotel. Who's going to come to your hotel? And even the guests that uh, bite the bullet and decide to come, you treat them badly, you know. So this is the situation that Nigeria has found ourselves in. So we just need to sit back and do the homework. And investment, investment will come by itself once they see that we're serious with what we are doing. All right, uh, Nick. Uh, but we 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 just we just talked about you know uh, the implications for international investment. But what about uh, how this might affect our relationship with China and also other countries or other foreign governments? Definitely, this thing now has diplomatic uh, implications because uh, these are two these are two countries now involved. Uh, Zonshan is, is Chinese and, and the government of Nigeria. So I believe that even at the diplomatic uh, level, uh, discussions will be happening. Uh, there will be communication. Uh, at the end of the day, I believe that the Chinese government will stand behind their company uh, because they, 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 they wouldn't want a situation where their company is badly treated in a place like Nigeria, and they as a government don't stand behind them. That will give a signal to the world that you can maltreat a Chinese company and get away with it. So, however, you know, as this thing is, there is going to be all sorts of um, uh, diplomatic uh, shenanigans that will happen, just like there will be legal uh, brick, uh, brick bats up and down. Uh, we can only say, uh, let's, let's take the seats and watch uh, the development of events in the days ahead. All right, Nick, now just before we let you go, you talked, uh, you said earlier uh, that uh, Nigeria can indeed appeal uh, the French court's ruling, but 
on what grounds can they do that? Just before we let you go. They have to have a ground. I am not party to the details of the case between Ogun State and uh, Donshan. I have no details. I don't know what happened. I don't, I have not, the agreement is not before me. So it is the Ogun State government that is going to pick up the points of appeal and the legal people will put paper, uh, put pen to paper and get the appeal ready and file it. And if, if, it, if it happens that Ogun State did things wrongly, they were actually wrong, then they better have to start entering negotiations as to how they are going to come out of this. Okay. Well, thank you so much, uh, Nick Agule, for joining us and speaking to us on this. A public affairs analyst uh, in the United Kingdom. Thank you. Thank you and good evening to our viewers.